Holy smokes, everyone. In this video, we're gonna be going over how the Federal Reserve just accidentally broke the financial system. What you have to know is we're in a crisis right now, a silent crisis that not many people know about, and they don't know about the functioning or the malfunction, should I say, of the financial system that is happening right now. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the parabolic growth in the Federal Reserve reverse repo market operations. And many people are getting this confused with the repo market crisis, the one that we had in 2019, where the repo rate spiked up to almost 10%, which definitely sent shocks throughout the financial system. But now it's not the repo market that is in crisis, it's the reverse. It's the reverse repo market crisis, which we're gonna get into right now. Okay, so if you look here, in 2019, there was a crisis, the repo market crisis. And as it says here, the overnight repo rate surged to a high of 8.5%, while the Fed's benchmark fund rate traded at 2.25%, the top end of the range that the central bank targets. So what happened is, the amount um, of interest banks had to pay to borrow was much higher than the Fed's rate of 2.25%. Now, this was caused by a crunch in liquidity. There wasn't enough funds. There wasn't enough cash in the financial system. Banks had an abundance of collateral, aka US treasuries or government bonds. They had a lot of them, but there wasn't enough cash. And this also happened at a time where the government was issuing a lot of new bonds, but also at the same time, banks were required to hold more cash reserves. So this was a perfect storm. But now the opposite is happening. There's too much cash in the system, but there's a shortage of treasuries. And listen to this, everyone. The issue that worries me more is when financial rates spike like this, unpredictable events start to come up. Okay, so that's what led to the repo market crisis when there wasn't enough cash, uh, the banks had an abundance of treasuries, but now the opposite is happening. There is too much cash in the financial system and there is a shortage of treasuries. And also in a minute, I'll get into how this is gonna affect you and me and what this means for the financial system and why we should care. So if we look at this chart here, the reverse repo markets just hit an all time high of 538 billion. And I'll just zoom in here. We can see here, it's going completely parabolic and it's never been this high before. And as you can see here, this is the highest it's ever been. Now, normally there are spikes at the end of a quarter when a uh, bank do quarterly reports to beef up their balance sheets, but we're not near the end of a quarter. And this started spiking in April 14th. So just to quickly explain what the reverse repo market is, is it is banks uh, parking cash or loaning money to the Fed in exchange for treasury. So they're giving money to the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve is selling treasuries to the banks. So what is happening now is the opposite of quantitative easing. They're actually selling treasuries, but if you look at this, the Fed isn't updating its balance sheet. So is the Fed's balance sheet even real? Do they actually hold $8 trillion? Are they actually purchasing more treasuries? Who knows, because according to the repo market, they're selling $583 billion of treasuries. Now, this is normally overnight or temporary, but still, this should reflect in the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Okay, now why is this happening? Well, look at this, everyone. Cash gone nuts. The Treasury general account drops to $675 billion as the Fed's reverse repo cash range hits $538 billion. So what happened is, um, last year, the US government issued around $3 trillion in treasuries and the Federal Reserve pretty much monetized the debt. But now the US government, instead of issuing more treasuries, it's draining the funds uh, from its treasuries account instead of issuing more debt, which is creating a shortage on short-term US treasuries. It says here, the Munchen Treasury started reducing the balance sheet in the Treasury general account in baby steps by borrowing less than they were spending and the Yellen Treasury announced in February that it would draw down the account to 500 billion by the end of June, and there's around 174 billion more to go. So last spring, the government sold a gigantic amount of debt, piling an additional three trillion on top of its mountain of debt in just a few months, like I was saying. At the same time, the Fed brought three trillion in securities as part of its QE and wealth effect program, 
thereby monetizing nearly all of the $3 trillion in new debt that the government issued during that time. So you know, people saying, oh, the Fed's not monetizing the debt. Well, it's very clear here that the Fed is monetizing the debt. But the government didn't spend all of the $3 trillion in proceeds from the new debt and the Treasury general account. This is a liabilities on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, and it soared from around $400 billion in February 2020 to $1.8 trillion in July. So this $1.4 trillion addition that the government had borrowed and the Fed had then monetized didn't go into the economy and the markets but sat in the general checking account. So when they first did this, the money didn't go into the economy straight away, but now it is. Listen to this. Since February, this money has started circulating in the economy, markets and banking system as the government spent it and it is part responsible for the flood of cash that suddenly started to show up in the banking system that was already up to the gills in cash and poured out from there. So as we can see here, the Federal Reserve is doing quantitative tightening. They're pulling liquidity out of the financial system through its Federal Reserve reverse repo market operations. So it's pretty much tapering and tightening now, but not many people know about it. But of course, all you loyal viewers and subscribers get the inside scoop. When the Treasury General account is finally drawn down to $500 billion, that source of liquidity will have dried up. At the same time, the Fed is getting closer to tapering its asset purchases and is under pressure to do so sooner rather than later because they're another source of this flood of liquidity in a system already creaking under the crazy amount of liquidity. So what this means is, and what I've been hearing a lot is, uh, investors or all these talking heads on you know, CNBC, they're saying, guys, look, inflation's not an issue. Look at the bond market. The bond market yields are going down. That means inflation is going to be transitory and the bond markets don't believe inflation's here to stay. Well, people, the bonds market is completely broken and the bond market has been hijacked by the Fed. So we can no longer look at the bond market to predict what's going to happen in the markets or what's going to happen with inflation because yields should actually be going up. But what the Federal Reserve's doing is it's monetizing the debt and it's pretty much doing yield curve control. So what it did is when the government issued all those $3 trillion in treasuries, the Federal Reserve brought it all up and it's still buying $80 billion of US treasuries today to suppress yields but this is also happening at the same time the government isn't issuing more US treasuries because it's using all the cash in its treasury general account. And this is causing mayhem in the money market funds. Investors used to normally, you know, give money to money market managers that would invest their money in short term uh, liquid investments or low risk uh, money fixed income investments. But this whole uh, money market industry is on the verge of collapse with these 0% yields. Listen to this. US money market funds struggle at short term rates near negative territory. And in a moment, I'm gonna get into why this reverse repo market could lead to negative interest rates and could have dire consequences for the financial system. So the result has been a squeeze that has driven the yields on some debt below zero rendering swaths of the industry unprofitable and setting a challenge for the Federal Reserve, which analysts say may have to weigh in to keep interest rates positive. Whoa, 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 whoa. So what this saying is, is the money markets, they're going broke by what the Federal Reserve is doing because some short-term debt or short-term assets, the yields are going negative, so the money markets aren't making money anymore. So what this means is, and what I've been warning about is, the Fed has to taper, it has to stop buying US treasuries because the yields are going so low, the money markets can't make money and what this is gonna force uh, the Fed to do, what I've been saying is a big risk for the markets, is gonna force them to lift interest rates unless they want you know yields to go negative and money markets to go bust. If government money market funds have to keep investing at 0%, the economics of the industry breaks down, said Christopher Tufts, global head of portfolio management for JP Morgan Asset Management's money market business. I wouldn't be surprised if funds start to limit investors' subscriptions or close outright to new money. So as we can see here, there's been a wall of cash has overwhelmed the money market funds. So it says here, the downward drift in short-term interest rates have grown more acute in recent weeks as more cash has flowed into the financial system. A steady drip has come from the Fed, which is buying $120 billion of US Treasuries and agency mortgage-backed securities each month. 
the Treasury Department has compounded this situation by doling out funds associated with the Biden administration stimulus package passed in March. So again, it's just saying here, like I've been talking about, is there's a shortage of treasuries because the Fed is buying them all and also the government isn't issuing more short-term treasuries. At the same time, the Treasury has also been shrinking the stock of short-term bills in circulation as part of its efforts to lengthen the maturity of the government's debt. So the government doesn't want to do short-term debt. They want to push this debt out as long as possible because the debt burden is getting out of control. In some cases, investors have effectively had to pay the privilege of lending money to the US government since the treasury bills maturing within one month recently yielded below zero. So this is the big issue with the Fed pumping huge amounts of liquidity. And while banks are now going to the reverse repo market, because if this 500 billion or half a trillion dollars every day went into the short term treasury bills, we'd have huge negative interest rates on the short term treasuries. And then the markets would be like, what's going on? The Federal Reserve's fund rates at zero, why are yields going negative? This is not meant to happen. This sounds bad. Sell, sell, sell. We may think negative yields are actually good for stocks, which they are in the long term, but if they're negative because they're not meant to, that's actually a bad thing. And it's also especially bad for banks because then their profitability is gonna go down and it's especially bad for the money market or fixed income investment companies. The rate at which investors swap treasuries and other high quality collateral for cash in the repo market and another stable source of income for money market funds has also turned negative at times. So again, the repo rates are going negative because of this flood of cash of liquidity. And so listen to this. This is what the money market uh, funds are saying. If we need collateral for the day and we're getting negative rates from the street or zero rates from the street, we'll go to the Fed and consider it the right trade for the day. When others get to the more expensive pricing, the Fed at zero has value. So they're saying, oh, look, zero is actually good when everything's going negative. And of course, this is mean there's going to have to be more intervention by the Fed into the markets. Listen to this. The Fed itself faces pressure to intervene in short-term markets. Its benchmark rate, the federal funds rate, has fallen along with other short-term rates and now sits well below the middle of the 0% to 0.25% target range. It recently slipped by 0.01 percentage points to 0.05 percent, according to the New York branch of the central bank, a level many rate strategists believe could compel the Fed to act. So BlackRock's cash management group expects an increase in both the reverse repo rate and the interest the Fed pays on reserves they hold at the central bank, and perhaps as soon as the next monetary policy this month. So this is what I'm talking about, people. All this crazy QE, all this money printing, the increase in the M2 money supply, that's going to lead to higher inflation, and then that's going to force the Federal Reserve to act. They're not going to have a choice but to lift interest rates. Without some relief, the longevity of the money fund industry could be at risk, warns Mark Canaba, a rate strategist at Bank of America. Money funds have already waived fees, and they are earning virtually zero, he said. There are questions about how long money funds can remain viable as loss-making entities. Well, well, well. So it seems like the Federal Reserve, as we can see here, increasing M2 money supply does have consequences. And it seems like, as we can see here, the Federal Reserve increasing its balance sheet to $8 trillion does has consequences. So to put it simply, in 2019, the repo crisis was caused by not enough cash, which led interest rates to spike where now the reverse repo market, which is the reverse of the repo market, there's too much cash. And when there's too much cash, it's pushing yields to negative territory. So what this means is with the increase of M2, with the increase of the Fed's balance sheet, with all the money printing, the Fed has done too much. They've printed too much money. And this is leading to crazy high inflation People can barely afford groceries, gasoline, housing prices are going out of control because there's too much money in the system. And so this means the Fed is going to have to start quantitative tightening. They're going to have to start tapering. They have no choice. So really, the Fed is stuffed up and they're stuffed up big. So what I'm expecting is very soon, I don't know when exactly it's going to happen, the Federal Reserve will start tapering and will start slowly lifting interest rates and the markets hate this, the stock market hates this. Who knows, the markets, you know, they seem to think that they're invincible and the Fed won't taper, but all the fundamentals are saying the Federal Reserve will have to taper, and we may see 
a decent sell-off in the stock market. And if the dollar strengthens, we may see things like Bitcoin, even precious metals, uh, everything priced in the dollar go down slightly. So it may be worthwhile just having a bit of cash on the side, not saying go all in on cash, but if the Federal Reserve does taper and does lift interest rates, the dollar will go up and assets will go down and then you can come in and buy up everything for a discount. So everyone, that was just my thoughts and a quick update on what exactly is going on in the reverse repo market operations because everyone's getting this confused with the repo markets. They're thinking, oh, look, the hedge funds, they're having to borrow huge amounts of money. The banks are going bust. They're borrowing money from the Fed. No, the banks are actually giving money to the Fed. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. I just want to say thank you. We've passed 60,000 subscribers. It is absolutely overwhelming the amount of support I'm receiving. And I'm loving the community we're building here. And we'll keep spreading the truth of what's really happening in the financial system. And of course, if you haven't already, please tap that like and subscribe button. I'll keep you update on the latest that's happening in the stock market, cryptocurrency markets, housing market, and what's going on in the global economy. If you're bored, I'll put up some of my other videos here. I'll see you all there.